Welcome to this lecture on density, specific gravity, and specific volume. And to be honest with you, we'll spend most of our time focusing on density and its very important implications and use in various pharmacy calculations. We will touch on how specific gravity and specific volume relate to density, but focus on how density can be used in many different types of pharmacy calculations. If you're like me, you probably remember the discussion from chemistry where we said that density was equal to mass over volume. And there you have it. That is the definition of density. What's interesting from a pharmacy standpoint and why we use density so much, keep in mind it applies to both solids and liquids. So in the example of a solid, you can have the mass of a solid ingredient, a certain, say, one gram of mass, that will occupy a certain physical space and different solids have different densities therefore the actual volume or the amount of powder in volume to produce the same weight can be different. This is very important when we talk about compounding capsules. So if you can picture a gelatin capsule it has a fixed volume. Okay so the volume or the size the opening inside that capsule can only hold so much powder. Well guess what you can fill it to the very tip with two different powders but the weight so the volume is the same but the weight of those two different powders are going to be different. So if we use lactose and we fill a capsule up it will have one weight. If we fill that same capsule up to with calcium carbonate it's going to have a different weight because the densities of those two different solid powders are different. So keep in mind solids have different mass per volume and certainly liquids have different masses per volumes. Now there's a note down below when we are talking about density we're not talking about a specific mass of any ingredient within the liquid so the everything that's in a liquid because some liquids can be more complex mixtures. So but the whole mass of that liquid of all of them together over the volume that liquid occupies essentially is the density. So the last thing I'd make note on this is that mass over volume is certainly density but you can express those amounts with lots of different units. Most often in pharmacy we will give you and use them in grams per milliliter but it could be in kilograms per liter, pounds per cubic foot. So you just have some unit of weight over some unit of volume so density isn't specific for any unique uh, unit if you will. So you need to be careful about your units again in terms of how it's expressed and how it's given to you. And lastly there is some confusion because one of the common units is grams in weight per milliliters per volume and that's often how concentration is expressed as well but a density is not a concentration so don't get those two confused. Let's keep going with our definitions. The next definition of an important term in pharmacy is specific gravity. So as you can see here specific gravity is equal to the weight of the substance divided by, be careful here though, the weight of an equal volume of water. So there we're going to standardize the volumes and therefore the difference is in specific gravity is the ratio between the weight of the substance over the weight of an equal volume of water. All right. Specific volume on the other hand is simply just the inverse of the specific gravity. So specific volume is equal to 1 over the specific gravity. So the number isn't, how it's derived doesn't change. You just take the specific gravity and do 1 over that. To be honest with you, I've never seen specific volume used in pharmacy practice myself. That doesn't mean there aren't applications for it, but I haven't seen it. So certainly in this course we really won't belabor that point. Okay. What's also confusing between specific gravity then and density is the fact that density has units and we talked about they could be different ways to express density in terms of mass per volume. Specific gravity does not. It will just be a number because essentially you're taking and, and to do this you have to have the same units of the weight of the substance divided by the weight of the water in the same units therefore those units cancel and you just get a number. So again keep in mind specific gravities are presented without units. The important point I want to make on this slide is that we just define the specific gravity as the weight of the substance over the weight of an equal volume of water. Because of that we can also say that the specific gravity is equal to the density of the solution when expressed in grams per mil divided by the density of water expressed in grams per mil. This only works because the density of water when using units of grams per mil is 1. Okay? It's also 1 if you just increase that by a thousand and say 1 kilogram per liter. That's 1 
and also one gram per milliliter is the density of water is one when you express them in those units. Now, as you can see on the bottom of the slide, that's not always the case. If you want to express the density of water in pounds per cubic feet, then it's 62.5. Then this system I'm going to talk about doesn't work. But so long as you express the density in grams per milliliter, then essentially the density in grams per milliliter of a solution is equal to the specific gravity because the density of water is one. Therefore, the number is the same. So my point being, in most of my questions and what I've seen in pharmacy practice a lot, you can use specific gravity and density interchangeably so long as the values you're using are in grams per milliliter. So if I give you a specific gravity, okay, you can say that's equal to the density in grams per milliliter. So if I give you a specific gravity of 0 0.9, then you can say that substance also has a density of 0 0.9 grams per milliliter. So I keep emphasizing that. It allows us to interchange density and specific gravity and treat them as the same value so long as you're in units of grams per milliliter. And that's certainly how we'll use that, that fact for a lot of our different problems. Let's just start using some of this information to solve some of our practice problems. So our first practice problem here says that liquid cocoa butter has a specific gravity of 0 0.86. What is the weight in grams of 48 milliliters of this liquid cocoa butter? Round your answer to one decimal place. Okay, I'll give you a minute to try to work on this. Use what we just talked about and try to use the information to determine the weight of 48 milliliters of cocoa butter. All right, let's answer this question, but start by following up on what we talked about in the last lecture about conceptualization by writing out what we know. So what we know and what we were given was that the specific gravity of liquid cocoa butter is 0 0.86. And remember, specific gravity doesn't have units. We were also given the volume of that liquid cocoa butter to be 48 milliliters. Okay, so we have a volume, but we want to weight. How do we use the specific gravity to obtain that? Well, remember, in terms of conceptualization, what we just talked about is we could say that density actually is numerically equal to specific gravity if we express density as that value in grams per milliliter. So if we say that the specific gravity is 0 0.86, we can say that the density is 0 0.86 grams per milliliter. And now that I have grams per milliliter, I have a number that I can use to convert weight to volume or even use it to go from volume to weight as we are going to do in this example. So now that we have that density value, let's go ahead and solve for the weight because we're gonna take our 48 milliliters and multiply it by the density expressed as 0 0.86 grams in the numerator over one milliliter in the denominator so that milliliters cancel. And we multiply that across and we can see that the weight of that volume of liquid cocoa butter is actually 41.3 grams. And that's the final answer. Okay. Before we go on, I just have to give a note here. In lab, we used to compound rectal suppositories and used cocoa butter as the base, and we would have to melt it down kind of as shown in these pictures here. I'm telling you, it smelled like liquid chocolate. It was the best smelling lab ever. So if you're ever going to make liquid or suppositories, consider your cocoa butter base as really just smells awesome. All right, our next problem reads that lactic acid is available as a liquid containing 88 grams of the liquid in a 100 grams of solution, and it has a specific gravity of 1.21. Calculate the concentration of lactic acid in this solution expressed in units of grams per milliliter, and let's round that answer to two decimal places. I'll give you a minute to do that. Let's start by writing what we know from the question, and what we know actually is a concentration of the lactic acid. The concentration is the amount of the lactic acid, the 88 grams, over the weight of the solution. So that's 100 grams. If we go ahead and divide out the numbers, we can see that 88 divided by 100 basically means we have 0 0.88 grams of lactic acid per gram of solution. That's a concentration. We also were given the specific gravity of 1.21. So with that 
two sets of information. I guess what I'm trying to conceptualize here is I have a concentration, but what I really want to be able to convert to is expressing it in grams per milliliter, not grams per gram. So I need to be able to convert that weight of solution to a volume in milliliters of solution. How can I convert a weight to a volume? Oh, I can use the density. And I remember that the specific gravity is the density so long as we express that number in the units of grams per mil. Easy enough. Let me set up my 88 grams of lactic acid over 100 grams of solution and multiply that by the density in the form of 1.21 grams of solution over one milliliter of solution. And that essentially is the density we extracted from the specific gravity. Now, I multiplied there so that the grams of solution can cancel. It's in the denominator of the left-hand side and the numerator of the density, so those will cancel, leaving me in grams of lactic acid per milliliter. So if I take 88 times 1.21 divided by 100, I get 1.06, and my units are going to be now grams of lactic acid, but per milliliter of solution, which is the answer to this question. All right, moving on to the next problem. It reads that romantadine hydrochloride syrup contains 2.4 grams of romantadine in each 240 milliliters of syrup. The syrup itself has a density of 1.2 grams per milliliter. And the question first asks, how many milligrams of romantadine would be in a 2.5 milliliter dose? And let's round that to the nearest whole number. I also give you a couple of multiple choice options to see how you do. So go ahead and work on this and then I'll show you my answer. Well, what do we know to help solve this problem? We have really three things that we know. We were given the density of the syrup of 1.2 grams per mil. I know that my dose that I'm going to be administering and from the question is a 2.5 milliliter dose. And remember, we have a concentration of 2.4 grams of romantadine per 240 milliliters of syrup. So uh, let's go ahead and just while we're on that, convert that to a little more easy number and take the 2.4 divided by the 240 and basically say that concentration of 2.4 per 240 is the same as 0 0.01 and again keeping the units grams per mil. So we have a concentration of 0 0.1 grams per mil of the syrup. Now what are we trying to do? We have a volume, we have a dose, we have a concentration remember, but the question wants to know how many how many milligrams of the romantidine. We want to know a dose. So from our previous lectures, we remember that dose is equal to the volume times the concentration. Remember, we have a volume, we have a concentration. This is pretty easy. The only trick is, the one additional thing I note, is that it wants to know how many milligrams. So we need to make sure that our final answer is in milligrams. All right? So let's do this. Dose is equal to volume times concentration. So we'll start with our volume of 2.5 milliliters. We'll multiply that by the concentration. We kind of already converted to 0 0.01 grams over one milliliter. And we do that so that milliliters cancel. And now my units are in grams. That would be a correct answer, but in grams. So to convert it to milligrams though, let's go ahead and multiply by the fact that there's a thousand milligrams per gram, grams cancel, and that puts our final answer in milligrams. So we take 2.5 times 0 0.01 times 1,000. That gives us a final numeric answer of 25, and the units are milligrams. So essentially this dose, a 2.5 milliliter dose, will provide a 25 milligram dose of romantidine. Now there's a part two to this question, which asks what is the weight in milligrams of the 2.5 milliliter dose of syrup? I specifically asked this question to ensure that you understand that the weight of the drug in the syrup is not the same as the weight of the syrup. So go ahead and try to answer that question and then I'll show you my work. So to answer that question, we know the same amount of information, so that's listed there. But what we're going to want to do now is take our volume of 2.5 milliliters and convert it to a weight of the liquid, not just the weight of the drug contained in the liquid. 
To do that, we're not going to use the concentration. We need to use the density. The density of a liquid will convert the volume to the weight of the liquid. Regardless of how much drug is in there, it's the weight of that volume of liquid. And that's what we're trying to solve for here. So let's take our dose of 2.5 milliliters and multiply it by the density of 1.2 grams per milliliter. So milliliters cancel. Then we'll convert grams to milligrams by multiplying by 1,000. If we do that math, you can see that essentially the weight of the syrup is 3,000 milligrams. So I would like for you to kind of compare this answer and this question to the one we just did. And remember, what I'm trying to get at here is that density and concentration are two different things. Density expresses the weight of the solution of the liquid, regardless of what's in it, per milliliter. Whereas a concentration is specifically the weight of a drug or a substance within the volume of the solution. Okay, So keep in mind that density and concentration are different but can be easily confused. Our next question asks, how many grams of dextrose are contained in a 250 milliliter IV or intravenous infusion of dextrose injection that contains 60 grams of dextrose per 100 milliliters? if the specific gravity of that solution is 1.2. Okay, again, lots of information here. Try to organize it and decide how to use it to obtain your final answer, which is how the weight in grams of dextrose contained in that solution. Let's write out what we know to be able to answer this question, and it starts with the fact that the specific gravity was 1.2. The volume of the infusion solution that we're looking at is 250 milliliters, and the concentration of that solution was given at 60 grams of dextrose per 100 milliliters. Let's go ahead and divide that out just for simplicity. So 60 divided by 100 is 0 0.6. So essentially, again, our concentration is the same as 0 0.6 grams per milliliter. So I have a volume. I have a concentration. What do I want to know? How many grams of dextrose? I want to know the weight of dextrose in grams. Well, that's easy peasy again. We know that dose is equal to volume times concentration. So let's take the volume of 250 milliliters multiplied by its concentration of 0 0.6 grams per one milliliter so that milliliters cancel. And we can say that that volume contains 150 grams of dextrose. Part two of this question asks, what is the weight of the 250 milliliters of a dextrose 60 gram per 100 milliliter IV solution if its specific gravity is 1.2? And round that final answer to the nearest whole number. Here we know the same information we did before, that is the specific gravity is 1.2, the volume of the solution is 250 milliliters, and that its concentration is the same at 0 0.6 grams per milliliter. What's different now is we want the weight of the solution, not the weight of the dextrose. So again, we're going to want to use the specific gravity, and we'll say that the specific gravity is the same as a density, so long as we use grams per mil. So we can say that the density of the solution is 1.2 grams per mil, and use that to convert the volume to a weight. So let's take the volume we had at 250 milliliters, multiply it by the density of 1.2 grams per milliliter, milliliters cancel, and the math gives us a final weight of the solution at 300 grams. And so just as a reminder, we did the same sort of thing where the previous question gave you use the concentration to determine the weight of the dextrose, whereas here we use the density to determine the weight of the solution. All right, let's do the next question where, I, and I like this question because it lets me show a really gross picture of a wart because we're going to be talking about lactic acid, which is commonly used as a wart remover. So in this question, it says that lactic acid is available as a liquid containing 85 grams of lactic acid in 100 grams of solution, and that solution has a specific gravity of 1.21. What we want to do is calculate the volume of solution needed to fill a prescription for this wart remover that calls for 1.5 grams of lactic acid. So calculate the volume that provides 1.5 grams of lactic acid. Let's start by writing what we know, which again, we have a specific gravity of 1.21. This time we have a dose, and because it said a dose of 1.5 grams of lactic acid, so that's a weight of lactic acid. 
And again, we were given a concentration expressed as 85 grams of the lactic acid in 100 grams of solution. So let's go ahead and divide that out and say that our concentration is 0 0.85, which is 85 divided by 100. So 0 0.85 grams of lactic acid per gram of solution. All right. So that's what we know. What is it asking for? It doesn't want a weight of lactic acid. We know that. It wants the volume of this solution. So what volume of solution will provide us our target of 1.5 grams, which is our dose? Well, we know that dose is equal to volume times concentration, which means that vol if we rearrange that, then volume is equal to the dose divided by the concentration. So if I take my dose and divide it by my concentration, then that should work. However, we're going to want to be able to also use the specific gravity and use it to determine the density or restate it, the density in the units of grams per mil so that we can convert the concentration, if you will, from weight of the solution to volume of the solution. So using our volume equals dose divided by concentration and a density value, we should be able to answer this question. So let's set it up with the dose that we're starting with, which is 1.5 grams of lactic acid. Let's divide it by actually multiplying by the inverse. So let's take 1.5 grams times the concentration expressed as 100 grams of solution in the numerator over 85 grams of lactic acid. That way grams of lactic acid cancel and we're now in the weight of the solution. But remember, we want to know its volume. So let's use the specific gravity to determine the density is 1.21 grams per mil. And now we're going to multiply, but let's express that density as 1 milliliter over 1.21 grams of solution. And we do that so that the units of grams of solution will cancel. And our final units would be milliliter. So if you take 1.5 times 100 divided by 85, and then divided by 1.21, your answer numerically would be 1.46, and the only remaining units would be milliliters of solution. So essentially 1.5 grams of lactic acid would be contained in 1.46 milliliters of this solution. Next question, and finally we get to deal with some money. It's all about the money, right? So in this question, it asks that if a formula for 1,000 grams of a polyethylene glycol ointment calls for 600 grams of PEG 400, now at $19.15 per pint, what is the cost of the PEG 400 with a specific gravity of 1.14? How much of that PEG would be needed to prepare 4,000 grams of ointment. And as a reminder, I give you the conversion factor for pints to liters there as well. So I'll give you a second and see if you can determine what the cost of a PEG 400 would be to prepare actually 4,000 grams of this ointment. There's actually a lot of information given to us here and a lot of moving parts in this question. So let's start with what we know and clarify that. We do know a concentration for our ointment. That is, we know there is 600 grams of this PEG 400 in 1,000 grams of the ointment. So let's go ahead and re-express that and take the 600 divided by 1,000 and say that that basically says we have a concentration of 0 0.6 grams of PEG 400 per gram of ointment. Okay, so we have a concentration. We also have an amount to prepare. We want to know the cost for preparing 4,000 grams. So that's what I'm going to call my amount to prepare is the 4,000 grams. I know its specific gravity is 1.14. And lastly, to come up with the cost it's going to take to prepare this, I know that it's $19.15 a pint. And now a pint is a liquid measure. So I want to prepare 4,000 grams, but my costs is in the ingredient expressed as a liquid. So what are we going to have to do here? Let's conceptualize. Well, I have an amount to prepare and I have a concentration. And if I multiply those together, that will give, tell me how much peg, the, how much weight of peg I need. That will be in a weight. Well, thankfully, I have a specific gravity and then I can convert that weight then to a volume. And then I'm probably going to have to do some conversions to get that volume into pints. But then lastly, I can multiply that using my cost value to determine the actual amount of money it will cost. So let's run all that together. So on the bottom here, you can see 
Let's start with the amount to prepare of 4,000 grams. Multiply that by its concentration of 0 0.6 grams of PEG per one gram of ointment. Grams of ointment will cancel, and now we're in the weight of PEG. Let's convert that weight of PEG to an equivalent volume by using the density. So we'll multiply by the density expressed as for every one mil on top, there is 1.14 grams in the denominator, so that grams of PEG cancel, and now we're in an equivalent volume. So now we know how much volume of PEG will be called for in our formula. But now let's go ahead and convert milliliters to liters. So we'll go ahead and multiply that value in milliliters times for every one liter. There is a thousand milliliters. So we'll divide by a thousand so that milliliters cancel. And at this point, I'm still in volume, but I'm volume expressed in liters because my conversion factor was given as pints per liter. So let's multiply by that conversion factor, that one pint over the fact that that's equivalent to 0 0.473 liters. So if we divide by that, liters cancel, and now I have the same volume but expressed in pints. And the, almost the last step is simply to multiply that volume in pints times the cost, which was given at $19.15 per pint. Multiplying, pints will cancel, and our final value will be in dollars and cents. So if you do that math all the way across, we can see that the cost for this PEG 400 to use uh, to create 4,000 grams of ointment would be $85.23. All right, we've made it to the last question, which reads that syrup USP, which stands for United States Pharmacopeia, so their syrup formula is prepared by dissolving 850 grams of sucrose in sufficient purified water to make a total final volume of 1,000 milliliters of syrup. Now the syrup has a specific gravity of 1.31. Question is, how many milliliters of water are used to prepare the liter of syrup? Okay, I'll remind you the density of water is one gram per mil and we want it rounded to the nearest whole number. So this is kind of interesting. We weren't given a volume of water. We were told to take 850 grams and simply make sure we add whatever amount of water it takes to get up to 1,000 milliliters. Okay, so this is a little bit of a tricky question, but I would tell you under my reminder that mass is always conserved. Okay, so a mass of water plus a mass of sucrose will give you a combined mass. And again, you can simply add those masses together. Adding the mass of 850 to whatever mass of water it is doesn't change the relative masses. We couldn't quite do that for volume because when you take a solid and dissolve it or disperse it in a liquid, then volumes are not always additive because of shrinkage or expansion or so forth. But we're not worried about volume. We are talking about mass. So as you formulate your answer to this, remember mass is conserved and you have enough information now, considering you also have the specific gravity, to be able to answer this question. So give it a shot. Again, let's start by listing out what we know. We know that the volume of the syrup that we're going to prepare is 1,000 milliliters. Okay? We know the concentration of the sucrose is going to be 850 grams of sucrose in a total volume of 1,000 milliliters. So let's go ahead and re-express that concentration as 850 divided by 1,000 or 0 0.85 grams of sucrose per milliliter of syrup. So we have a concentration, 0 0.85. We also have a specific gravity of 1.31. So with all that information, where do we go with this? Well, keep in mind that with this idea of mass being conserved, that the total weight of this 1,000 milliliters of syrup that contains this 850 grams of sucrose Weight is conserved, so it really the total weight of that syrup is equal to the weight of the two components. It would be equal to the weight of the sucrose plus the weight of the water. Okay, So if we could determine the weight of the syrup in total, and we know the weight of the sucrose, we could use that to determine the last factor, which is the weight of the water. Okay, And how can we determine the actual weight of our syrup, since we're starting with a volume? Oh, we have specific gravity. So we can use the specific gravity to be able to convert the weight of the syrup to a volume and to be able to then help determine the weight of the water that we used. And then we can convert the weight of the water back to a volume since we know the density of water being one grams per mil.
So I'm trying to describe how we can go from the starting point to the end point. So let's now actually do that numerically. So what we know we're starting with is a thousand milliliters of syrup. So let's use the specific gravity to say that that means that the density is 1.31 grams per mil. So if we multiply by that density, milliliters will cancel and will be in grams. So again, 1,000 milliliters times 1.31 grams gives us 1,310 grams total weight. That's the weight of the 1,000 milliliters of syrup. How did we make that syrup? We made that syrup by dissolving 850 grams of sucrose. So let's take our total of 1310, subtract that 850 grams of sucrose, and what's left over has to be the weight of the water. So when we subtract that, we see that the water weighed 460 grams. A simple final conversion simply is that 460 grams of water, if we multiply by its density, expressed as for every 1 mil over 1 gram, grams cancel, and we can see that obviously it's equivalent to 460 milliliters of water. So again, this was an interesting case of using the density and the specific gravity to be able to convert either in, with all of these questions, we use it to either convert from a volume to a weight or from a weight to a volume. So, and again, remember that specific gravity is equal to density so long as you use it in the units of grams per mil. And we will continue to use this, that fact, and use density throughout lots of different compounding calculations in the rest of this course.